our special utility district regular um, called board meeting. I was an item number one, call to order, 1A roll call. Maribel Diaz, absent. Cesar Rodriguez Jr. Present. Present. Ricardo Perez. Here. Present. Lloyd Loya. Here. Present. Homero Tijerina. Absent. Ivan Sandoval. Present. Present. We do have a quorum. Um, item 1B, invocation by Jennifer Perez. Minutes for April 28, 2022, our special board meeting. So moved. Second. I have a motion by Cesar and I have a second by Lloyd. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Item 2B, approval of minutes for the May 2nd, 2022, our board meeting. So moved. I have a motion by Cesar. Second. I, I have a second by Lloyd. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. <clears throat> Item 2C, approval of minutes for May 18, 2022, our special board meeting. For the record, uh, Mr. Tejerina walked in at 6.01 p.m. Motion, ma'am. I have a motion by Lloyd. Second. I have a second by Cesar. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion. Uh, any opposed? Any opposed? Ivan, says that you, you all are good. No, I mean, you, Homer, good. Motion carries. Discussion item number three. For the record, Ms. Diaz walked in at 6.02 p.m. Item, good afternoon. Good evening. Item number three, discussion and possible action on a non-standard service agreement for water and wastewater to be submitted to Mr. Omar Cantu for costs related to water and wastewater service for Benson Cardinal subdivision. Thank you. Uh, good evening, board members. This here, uh, Benson Cardinal subdivision, the property is located on Benson Palm Drive and Watson Road and approximately 2,200 feet south of the intersection of Benson Palm Drive and Business 83. The project consists of 10.02 acres for six residential lots. We recommend approval. So moved. Who was that? Okay, I have a motion by Tijerina and I have a second by second. Lloyd. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Sorry. Motion carries. Item number four, discussion and possible action on change of date for the July 2022 board meeting. Yes, uh, Madam President, uh, members of the board, uh, um, the first Monday of July So do I have a motion to move the, our July meeting to the 11th of July? Yes, so I make a motion to change the date from July 4th to July, July 11th. 11th. Okay, so I have a motion. Second. I have a motion by Diaz and I have a second by Perez. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Item number six, discussion and possible action on authorizing the general manager to advertise. Sorry, did I jump one? I'm sorry. Discussion and possible action revising date and time of regularly scheduled AWA SUD board meetings. I know there had been uh, recommendations by uh, different board members um, to change from Monday board meetings to Thursday um, board meetings. Um, we're trying to change the time a little bit um, earlier just so we can get out earlier. Um, so 
if anybody would like to make a motion to. I make a motion for, for us Sister. to change the meetings from uh, Mondays to Thursdays. 530? 530, I think it was. Well, I think the, the time was uh, so many people get there at 5. 545. Yeah, 545 is fine. Uh, make a motion. I make a motion to change the date. The only question I would have about that is whether or not that would apply to the July 11th meeting. Yes, that would okay. also apply to the July 11th meeting. So that would make it the, the 14th, right? Oh, okay. 11th, oh, the 14th, 12th. yes, correct. 30. Okay. All right. Okay. So effective, effective yeah. July. So it would start. So we're. Yeah, right. So uh, the motion would be to move the meetings, the regularly scheduled meetings from the first Monday of the month to the first Thursday of the month. Is that right? And as part of that motion, you're also moving the July meeting from July 11th to the 14th. Is that right? The first yes. Thursday of the month. The first the seventh. Oh, or okay. We'll we can right. the seventh. It's right. yeah. I'm fine on the seventh. But is everybody? I know there's several people that will not. Time. They're gonna be out okay. for for July. So. Okay. It's it's. I just want to. I want to raise that so we don't have a conflict yeah, between yeah. what they are. Right. You can make whatever motion you want. They won't be here for July. I'm gonna be here for so. It's gonna be between me, you. Monday. 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 Stay on Monday. Thursdays, there's uh, board meetings, other places, and once uh, school year starts, there's going to be a lot of games for the students. And I know a lot, a lot of our staff have kids and athletics. So, unless you would just yeah. want to change it to Thursday, effective in August, mm. and leave leave the July meeting the way it is for the first Monday, which is on the 11th. Or we can just come back to it like we always do. Yeah, we'll come back to it. So we table it? Yes. We'll I'll make a motion to the table. Second. Uh, second. Okay, got a motion and a second. Matt, Matt good question. Since yep. it was tabled last time, do we need a motion to come out and untable uh, it? It was put it? on the agenda. Yeah, we're good. It was okay. already put on the agenda. Now, I would say we have a we have a pending motion already uh, yeah, that so was partially made. So, so you could withdraw that motion if you wanted to, and then then that would give an opportunity for another one. But you, we have to deal with Ms. Diaz's uh, motion yeah. she's already made it. Okay. I mean, yeah. if you if you all are in agreement, we can you can you can do your motion and change it and just do, we can start effective in in August and and disregard July because of July we already changed because of the holiday. Right. right. So and we'll change it. It doesn't in, work. But you August. have if there's other board members that are in agreement, that'll still go through. So effective July. Effective in August, you'll do it. Effective in August. Okay, so that's my motion. Okay, so Ms. Diaz has a motion to move the regularly scheduled board meetings from Mondays the to, thurs th to the first Thursday of the month, beginning during the calendar month of August. Is that right? Yes. Okay, so we've got a motion on the table. Well, we'll try a second. Okay, so I have a motion by Diaz and I have a second by Lloyd. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Aye. Okay. Motion carries on item number five. Item number six, discussion and possible action on authorizing general manager to advertise for competitive bids on the purchase of water treatment chemicals to include liquid chlor, chlorine gas and chlor, chlorine dioxide sodium chloride. Uh, yes, uh, Madam uh, President, uh, members of the board, uh, we're soliciting to uh, advertise for competitive bids uh, for water treatment chemicals as part of the water Okay, so you need our motion to go out. To authorize, to, to advertise. Motion. To advertise. I have a motion by Lloyd and I have a second by Diaz. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Item number seven, update and discussion regarding district finances, trends, debt service, and revenues. Yes, uh, Madam President, uh, members of the board, uh, attach uh, in your package, you will find uh, two Excel uh, sheets uh, that we have. One is the debt coverage ratio, and the other one will be, the second one will be the cash balances. On the debt uh, coverage ratio, just uh, to start. 
summarize uh, the last 10 years, uh, fiscal year uh, from 2012 to 2021. You can see the actual trends in history where uh, Iowa was in 2012 at 8 million, uh, 8.6 million on operating revenues uh, transitioning from uh, 2012 to 2021 to 10.8 uh, million dollars in oper operating revenues. Again, on the operating expenses, going uh, a little bit down on the, on the Excel sheet, we have uh, the operating expenses in 2012 from 5.2 million to 7.9 million in 2021. So as you can see, the increase in operating expenses, and of course, you can see the trend on, on receive uh, uh, operating revenues for water and sewer as well. On the uh, availability of uh, debt service, of course, on, on 2012, we were at 3.4 million, and it has gone down to 2.9 million, right? And that's the, basically, that's the difference of what we have from the operating uh, expenses to what we have on the operating revenues, which that's the allowable uh, um, uh, funding that we had those years for debt service. Now, if we go to the next row, we can see the annual debt service payment. And basically in 2012, we had about 1.2 million. And uh, back in 2021, we were at 3.7 million. Meaning that in 2021, the difference for deficit that we were in that year, it was approximately $800,000 in deficit. Mm -hmm. Now we can see the coverage ratio for that, for that specific year in 2020, 2021 being 78%. And going back to 2012, where we were at 200 and um, 270 percent over. So the required coverage ratio, if I'm not mistaken, part you can touch and face on this. So yes, uh, good uh, afternoon, Madam President, board members. So required coverage ratio is 125 percent. So uh, we are below that coverage ratio at 78 uh, percent. It used to be higher at 200 and. 70 percent and and uh, the, the like uh, general manager was mentioning that the require uh, that ratio is reflecting how much annual uh, debt payment that we have versus uh, the cash flow that we have in uh, sustained to that debt payment and uh, the debt payment is kind of exceeding uh, that uh, threshold available to make those payments and that's why that uh, coverage ratio of 125 is kind of at 78 percent. Okay. Going to the uh, to the cash balances uh, uh, again, we have the last 10 fiscal years uh, for this trend. So, for the unrestricted cash balances in 2012, we had four million, and then it transitioned down in 2021 to 231 thousand dollars. So you can see the trend of the general operating account different accounts that we had investments in, or I was uh, had investments in back in 2012, and now what we have in 2021. So in 2012, 4 million, 2021, the unrestricted total of 231,000 dollars. On restricted cash balances, which is the water right uh, reserve fund uh, that we have, of course in 2012 we had 905,000 dollars, and now in 2021 we have 2.6 uh, million dollars on that uh, restricted cash uh, balance. Uh, as far as the impact fee account, and basically what we get from subdivisions coming in, development coming in, uh, back in 2012, we had approximately 1.4 million, 1.5 million, and down to, uh, in 2021, to one point, again, the same 1.4 uh, million dollars in the total both accounts. So both accounts are for use for the impact uh, fee account. So basically, uh, having the having the, the, the totals right, including the impact fees, uh, water right uh, cash uh, balances, and unrestricted cash balances in 2012, we had a total amount of 6.3 million. 2013, 8.4 million, and then now in 2021, back in 2021 was 4.3 million. So this is just to give the, the board an idea uh, uh, as far as the last 10 years for cash balances and the debt ratio that we had as far as the history, a footprint of what we had had from 2012 to 2021. So basically it's just a discussion item that the board knows. That's great that you put this because actually
actually this will, this tells you exactly where the company is. In uh, 2012, we had uh, an income of you know, $8 million. The debt was okay. We were at 2.70%, and now we're at 78%. So that tells you the company is not doing money in order to uh, do uh, his debt obligations. So we need to do uh, something. Uh, I think it started as today. There's some items on the agenda that in order to bring more uh, revenues, if we don't do that, uh, I think we're not going to be able to meet our debt uh, in the near future. And this is just cost of living, I guess, and currently debt that we incur in the last uh, two years, three years, that uh, like the sewer project. But even if the sewer project was not there, uh, we had only paid about $500,000 if we go into the next page on the second item. And, uh, if we take that away from our payment, we still will be under around $300,000. So uh, I think there are things to come in order for us to work in with uh, financing and working with the boards. I mean, there's things that we're gonna have to do to uh, uh, make our, our, our budget. If we don't make our budget, we're gonna be, uh, I mean, we're gonna be on the rate. We're not gonna be either uh, to refinancing our debt and just going up on, on rates, which we don't want. But if uh, this company would have been taken over by the state, they would come in here and just do the same thing with that, what we're doing. But uh, you already picked up the rates back in Yeah, but it, it in was January, zero. didn't you? It 50 wasn't cents it. for water and sewer? It wasn't we didn't enough. pick up the rates. We, th that, was an, that was an agreement, an order that was yeah, already in place. But it was place. implemented, right? The order? The order yeah, it was implemented. Order, it's implemented. Okay. But okay. I mean, we just these are numbers. I mean, uh, we're not making them up. I mean, it was uh, in 2016 we had uh, almost uh, three million dollars on CDs, 2.6 million dollars, and those CDs since 2016 they've been using them to uh, make debt payments. So uh, I think 2016 that that was an eye opener. Apparently they um, it was an oversight. They didn't see they need to needed to adjust. So we are here today. Actually, the end of the year was two, two hundred thirty-one thousand dollars. So that means that we are on, like on a day-to-day -day, uh, basis, expecting people to pay in order for us to pay our debt. That's a that's in a perfect world, but there's in a be world where everything's going up, especially the last one year. So it's right. like I don't see how some of us expect to have the rates for 10, 20 years at the same rate when everything gas. There's the in fluctuations. So it's just it's, everything's gone up. Right, but, uh, but just, with, we need to work together as a board and see what we can come up with. And, exactly, exactly, Mr. Perez. We agree. But there was a, this is a good. Uh, so they can tell you where you are. Tell the company where it's at. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Perez. Item number eight, <clears throat> presentation, discussion, and possible action on recommendations by committee to amend fee schedule set forth in district rules, Article 5, Article 6, and Article 9. Madam President, there is a, a, a proposed resolution that's in the board packet for item eight. Uh, the issue that uh, is, is before the board today for an action item simply relates to the late fee payment proposal that the finance committee had but i want to just bring the attention to the board there's actually three changes that's in this proposed resolution yes, the first two are not actually changes last july we uh we the board changed the construction fee from five percent to seven point five percent and that change was made to article nine of our rules which lists all the fees and and whatnot that we charge when mm -hmm. this project came up, we went back and looked at the rules and we noticed that section five and six referenced the construction fee at 5% the way it was before last July's change. And so it, that just didn't get changed. So the first two changes in that resolution to section five and section six changed the fee from 5% to seven and a half, but it's, a it's just cleaning up right. uh, the reference uh, back to it. So that is not something before the board for a rate change that's just a cleanup the, okay. the the late fee issue is, is something mr uh, uh Swindus will talk about yes on the late fee uh, currently we have a five uh, five dollar uh, late fee uh, payment uh, for discussion uh for with 
the, with the committee. Uh, there was a presented different options, uh, and uh, the option that we're presenting today is to go from five dollars to ten dollars as a flat fee uh, for the late payment. Okay. Or late fee payment. Motion to approve. Second. Okay, I have a motion by uh, Loya and I have a second by Cesar. Are those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Aye. Motion carries. <clears throat> Item number eight, discussion and possible action on approval of resolution to update signers and authorized persons with Bank of America. A motion by Loya. Second. I have a second by Cesar. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Item number 10, discussion and possible action on approval to close accounts with Bank of America. Yes, uh, Madam President, members of the board, uh, this item goes in hand with item number uh, nine, and again is to uh, close the account with Bank of America. We have a total uh, escrow amount within the two Accounts for uh, ninety-eight thousand one hundred thirty-eight dollars and seventy-seven cents. So basically, by closing these accounts, uh, uh, this funding will be applied to the district's uh, next payment, uh, which is on November first, uh, twenty twenty-two, for these two escrow accounts with Bank of America. Okay. Motion to approve. I Second. Have a I have a motion by was it Loya? I have a motion by Loya and I have a second by Diaz. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Discussion and possible action uh, action approving um, supplemental consulting services by Capex Consulting for water and wastewater rate analysis. Yes, uh, Madam President, uh, members of the board, uh, we're looking into having a supplemental uh, consulting services with Capex uh, Consulting, mm -hmm. with, which is uh, Mr. Jeff uh, Snowing. Snowing, I believe he should be on the line. Yes. And basically, this is a, a, he submitted a technical and important uh, co uh, cost proposal uh, to include on the consulting services water and wastewater rate study and long-term financial plan. So we believe now is the, is the time to begin working on this. It's gonna take approximately, I believe, 60 to 90 days to complete uh, this uh, financial plan and mm -hmm. rate study uh, for the continuation of, of, of some of the, the, the rates that we have and of course the, the projected uh, financial plan that we have. If uh, you have any questions, I believe he's on the line. Uh -huh. uh, Mr. Snowden. Hello. Hi. Um, I don't know if you want to uh, explain anything to the board regarding uh, regarding the proposal to update your rate plan, um, we see a bit of a five-year plan in 2019, and uh, I think we're in year four now. Right. And uh, as, as the staff is shared with the board, we have had some significant inflation pressure on your cost to operate. We've also had some new debt executed, so um, I've been speaking with management about updating the rate study to provide you a new plan to generate revenues and still keep your rates. You know, the objective always is to keep your rates in the medium of the peer group, the middle of the peer group in the Rio Grande Valley. And so we can demonstrate to our rate payers that we offer good value. So that's, that's really my objective with this update. Yes. Hey, I'm glad to answer any questions. Thank you. Does anyone? We can keep a one to one ratio. What to one ratio? You know, I don't know what uh, what you're gonna be based on your studies and the, the amount of debt we have, or what is it? How is it that you're gonna estimate your analysis? Or I don't know. Maybe uh, I'm making uh, sure clear. So to answer your question on the debt service coverage ratio, yeah, I would uh, I would target a 120 on that. So debt service coverage is basically it's your 
your lender telling you? First of all, am I answering your question or is it like all the different No, directions? I mean, 120 would be great, but. Uh, <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, 120 is really what you need to satisfy your bond covenants. And the debt service coverage ratio, all that is, it says for every dollar in debt that you owe each year, after you pay your operating expenses, which is your salary, chemicals, electricity, everything, they want you to have a dollar twenty left over for every one dollar in debt payment. That's the, that's, the cover, that's all the coverage ratio is. Mm -hmm. and, uh, um, that's what really what your financial advisors are concerned with, and what uh, your, your management has identified as a priority to, to review. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Soto. Does anybody else have any questions? I'm good. Motion to approve. Okay, I have a motion by lawyer. Second. Who is that? Yeah, uh, I have a motion. I have a second by Tijerina. Now, those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. <coughs> yes. Okay. Item number 12 discussion and possible action. Thank you, Mr. Snowden. Yes, thank you. Item number 12 discussion and possible action authorizing general manager and legal counsel to contact Hidalgo County for the 2022 election services and proceedings with. Preparations for our said November 8, 2022 general election. Yes, uh, Madam President, basically, uh, we're uh, at the time where we will start uh, preparing uh, for the our said November 8 uh, general election and uh, coordinating with the county as far as locations and, and the cost uh, for this, uh, for the services that the county provides. So, this is basically starting uh, to get the communication. Okay. Uh, I make a motion. Okay. I have a uh, motion by to authorize a general manager for. Second. I am not done, but okay. I make a motion. Uh, okay. Rudely yes. interrupted. Thank you. I have a motion by Diaz and I have a second by Mr. Tijerina. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Item number 13 discussion and possible action on approval to extend agreement with M2 Engineering for our Suds Palmview Wastewater Collection System Project. Yes, uh, Madam President, members of the board, this uh, supplemental agreement uh, with uh, M2 Engineering is basically the continuation of the uh, construction management services uh, for the uh, wastewater collection system here in Palmview. So mm -hmm. we have uh, reduced, uh, after talking to M2 Engineering, we have reduced the cost to $6,500 per month from uh, $16,500 $16, based on the on the hours uh, that are gonna be uh, needed needed to complete the project. Now the project, and, and I know that uh, Milo is here, uh, the project, it's on its tail end. Uh, so we're basically looking for uh, a month to month basis until the project is complete. Uh, <laughs> it's a lot, we have a lot to tell. <laughs> <laughs> So hopefully once, uh, once uh, I know that Milo is going to present on, on that project here shortly, but basically it's going to be in to a month-to-month -month basis for a $6,500 uh, fee uh, until the project is completed. And that's flat. I, I know that I was looking at the, the contract, the way you put it together, yeah. and I, when you say uh, hourly, you mean the hourly estimate that you've come up with at $6,500? Correct. Okay. Okay. So move. Second. Um, I have a question. Sorry, right okay. before. Go ahead. Um, uh, before, um, if at the tail end of it, uh, Milo, uh, we get to the point where it's going to be a minimal amount of hours. Is it still going to be the six thousand five, or are we going to yes, just that? That's or? one of the things that I had mentioned to uh, Mr. Roberto that uh, if it want, if it, if you guys would prefer to make it just hourly because it's once we're closer to the tail. Yeah. Once we get closer, I think it'll vary and maybe it can even be reduced to even even more some because okay. right now I'm not planning to have the inspector out there, you know, forty to forty five hours a week. Right. So I think it's just there's punch list items, it's just fixing some deficiencies. Uh, there's 
district to see how we can affect those items to get, to, you know, to finally uh, get some closure. Okay. So, so uh, it, it may start varying afterwards. So, okay. Madam President, maybe we can uh, subject to not to exceed the sixty-five hundred dollars and mm -hmm. on an hourly basis. Is yes, that, is that we, we wouldn't have a problem with that. Not so, to sixty-five hundred dollars. Yeah, it can be less. It can be charged on an hourly basis. Okay. Are you all okay with that? I'm okay. okay. I've got some questions further on when you're gonna discuss the project. Okay. Yes. So can I continue with the same motion that they did, or do they okay. have to? No, it's a little bit different. Okay. So what, motion was just, what was just discussed would be uh, to continue the contract Let on a see. monthly basis at a 6500 uh, on an hourly basis, not to exceed $6,500. Okay. Is that, is that right? Yeah. That's going to start when? This month? Yes, it will start at, uh, yeah. yeah. It expires June 3rd. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So uh, we need a, a motion. So move. I have a motion by Tijerina. Second. I have a second by Cesar. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> Item number uh, 14, discussion and possible action authorizing general manager to submit declaration of loss and request for restitution from Jeremy Lancon pursuant to the notice from probation office of the United States District Court for the Southern District of Texas. Madam President, uh, this uh, item 14 and 15 are similar to others that we've done. We received notice from the uh, U.S. District Attorney's Office that there have been uh, plea agreements by various uh, individuals. Uh, this one would be uh, Mr. Jeremy Lancon and, of course, uh, Armin Garza, where they have invited us to make a request for restitution. Mm -hmm. uh, in order to do that, we've got to provide some proof and documents uh, without getting into the PSI matter that's kind of a related uh, issue to some extent. Um, the those, the deadline to submit these requests for restitution, we have been in communication with the office and they said this is going to be August, September, end of the fall is going to be the actual deadline, which is good for us because we need some time to quantify that. What we're doing is just to be consistent with how we've done this before is that we're requesting the board's authority to submit that request as we gather the information and figure out you know, what that amount would be. Definitely. Okay. So I need a... A motion authorizing the general manager to submit that declaration of loss. So move. I have a motion by Cesar. Second. I have a second by Perez. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Item number 15, discussion and possible action authorizing general manager to submit declaration of loss and request for restitution from Armin Garza pursuant to notice from probation office to the United States District Court for the Southern District of Texas. Pretty much the same, same as the same other exactly. Yes. We don't have nothing working on, on this this case, two cases, nothing on right now. Well, these are criminal cases. So these are not cases like where we are suing any of these individuals or oh, being no. sued. It's, it's just a matter of they have reached plea agreements with the district attorney's yes, office. Sir. And in these two cases, they've been approved. Um, but they, they're waiting on sentencing. And as part of the sentencing process, the court can order that the criminal defendant, in addition to serving, you know, a sentence, pay back certain monies that were taken. Of course, you know, if they're capable of doing it. Um, but but that's that's what this relates to. So this isn't anything that, that like I'm handling or that we are a part we, of. We don't know an amount. No, we don't. No, no, we don't. Okay. <clears throat> so I need a motion for number fifteen. So move. I have a motion by Perez. Second. I have a second by Diaz. All those in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Item number 16, general manager's report, uh, 16A April financials. Uh, yes, uh, Madam uh, President, members of the board, I have here uh, Mr. Park, uh, Naive, uh, representing the finance department. Uh, good evening, Madam President, board of directors. Uh, we have the Financials for April so far until April we our revenue collection is 3.5 million which is 31 percent of our uh, original budget that the board adopted which is um, almost close to the 33 percent that should April have and our operating expense with 2.3 million which is 30 percent which is better because uh, original expense would be 33 percent so we are three uh, percent down and on the expenses as compared to the forecast so that's uh, 
uh, kind of and revenue are kind of at upward stream as summer is picked up and kids are at home. If any debt after debt uh, or average compared from last year? Uh, no, this is the forecast that uh, budget that adopted for this year, but this is pure operating revenue and expenses, uh, not including the debt that we have to mm -hmm. pay. But it's in line from last year, we're doing it better. Uh, we are in line to last year. We are almost a uh, little sigh on la revenue, but same time we are also little sigh in expenses. But usually the revenue would have upward stream uh, because last year lots of people were home, uh, kids were home to the due to COVID. Mm -hmm. So water usage was, but in that regard, we were very sigh of the last year, uh, almost there. And the expenses were also lower compared to the last year. So. We are in line in that uh, if you take both, we are we are doing uh, fine because our expenses were 30 percent, which is forecasted 33, and our revenue is 31 as forecast of 33. So we are kind of one percent upward time comparing to operating revenue and expense. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? Item number 17, District Engineer's Report. Thank you very much, Park. Thank you. Item number 17, District Engineer Report. Item 17A, NADBank Technical Assistance Agreement, Sewer Hookups. Uh, yes, good evening, board members. So on the yard line project so far, they've completed 1,462 services that have been installed. Uh, out of those 1,462, 1,317 are connected. And out of those, 1,252 septic tanks have been uh, pumped. The, the spoil has been pumped and hauled off. And out of those, 1,245 have been fully decommissioned. So I'd say the project's appro approximately 75% complete. Is it moving along for the additional? Yes. Uh, in regards to the, the potential additional, additional work, yes. we. We haven't received uh, anything in writing as of yet, but uh, in speaking with, uh, with Mr. Carlos Acevedo of NADBank, he has mentioned that the additional work will be going through. And uh, the good news from there is that there, the, the actual design portion of it will be f paid through separate funds that won't be affecting the construction budget. So that's all also f fully granted. But we, we are waiting for, uh, I guess, the official, the official letter from them. Uh, any questions on, on the NADBank project? How many are left, Milo? Sorry. So they're approximately 75% complete. There's about 400 that are that are pending to get installed. And we're waiting for what on those? Uh, no, everything's moving along except uh, the the last when we got like about four inches of rain. That week like was pretty slow because because a lot of the homes, you know, uh, it was too wet to go in there. And make, it was too messy. But they're moving along. They're approximately 75% complete. And what I was mentioning to, to Mr. Uh, Mr. Rick Perez here was the additional the additional work that be, that might be coming along. We've received the verbal approval, but we're still pending the, the official letter. Nice, man. Thank you. Yes, Thank you. Sir. Thank you, man. On uh, mile three water line improvements, the contractor's approximately 95% complete. The only thing pending is a, a crossing right in front of the standpipe and two service connections. Uh, the remainder of the pipe has been installed and they've done the testing on it. So we're hoping that in the next couple of weeks that that project will be completed as well. Milo, is the line being put on the easement or is, is uh, uh, no, no, it? No, sir. No, no, no. It's a uh, it's being it's being placed on the three foot right away line and five foot right away line uh, because of the funding that was needed to be able to acquire easements. We uh, didn't have the money to acquire the easements. No, that wasn't that wasn't uh, that we didn't have the time nor uh, nor was it included to get easements. But with the project that you know it's being widened to a four you know to four lanes with a center uh, double turning lane. There, there's a lot of areas where there's not much room for growth, like in the Calichera area. So, uh, we hope that the, those lines never have to move again. But right now, we're doing, we get an easement on everything we're doing, right? Yes, sir. Right now, and everything. 
any subdivision that comes in, wherever the water line's installed, it's required to have a 15-foot outside exclusive easement along the front of the lot. In case they ever build the road, or are they going to have to pay us? That's correct. Thank you, ma'am. Then on a Texas Water Development Palm View Sanitary Sewer Improvements Project, as we've discussed previously on the last uh, couple items, uh, the, the project included you know four different contracts three out of those four have been fully closed uh, we received a letter from texas water development board accepting the project closeout for the main lift station and force main so the only thing pending is the tail end of the project uh for uh which is the project that we're working here uh, uh with the bonding uh, with the surety and right now they've completed uh, and by, by I mean completed is substantially complete to where we're able to start connecting homes. Uh, the G7 area, which is here in the HEB, uh, HEB area north of the expressway, and then everything south of the expressway has been accepted to be able to connect homes. And the only area pending is the uh, G1 service area, which is north of the expressway from Minnesota going to, to Brayfogle. Uh, that area, we've, we've been able to provide them. We've done several walkthroughs, even one included with the Texas Water Development Board. We've provided them with a punch list, a long punch list of items that, that they need to complete. And so that's, that's what they're doing. And then there's, there's some items that they don't, agree, they don't agree on, and so we go back and forth with that. But that's, that's what we're having to deal with, and we hope to, to finally get that, that area to substantial completion because the yard line contractor is, is uh, getting close to finish the connections on the south, so from there the expectations are to come over to that area. So if you can do a, like a progress report, something like that, you can give it to the, uh, the manager, so like that he can go on to the city of Palmview and let her know where we stand with dates and time and all that. And what you just said, like Palmview, uh, HEB, all that, so like that, they're aware that things are moving along. Okay, we'll do. You know, like a, like a report or a manager Yes, yes. Right, right now, the what we do is we do uh, daily inspection reports by being out in the field, and then we do a weekly inspection report that that we provide. But uh, what I'll start doing is we'll do a full monthly report that he can uh, right. share with the other we'll entities. Be happy for, you know, yes. Can connect some of those. So he can do 30, 40 days, 60 days. What do you think? Well, plenty. You're probably going to say that on your report. Right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, can share that report with us. Yes, uh, they, they, the, the surety feels like they, they'll be completed within the next 30 days. Uh, we don't 100% agree with that, so because, because we go back and forth with some of those deficient, deficient items, so there's a little bit of uh, going back and forth there, so uh, I'm thinking hopefully within 60 to 90 days we'll be, we'll be close to at least having that, that section connected. How also. long is it guaranteed on the, that project? How long was that? The guarantee. Like the warranty period? Warranty, yeah. the, the warranty period is standard for all projects. The same as a one-year warranty. After? After, uh, once, once we have substantial completion, completion. Yep. the one-year warranty starts. So for example, the area here at HEB, that area started once we accepted, accepted that because we start connecting homes and vice versa. We've done it in separate substantial completions. Uh, we've done which is the G7 area, and then A1E, which is Benson Palm, uh, going south to uh, Business 83, and, and that area. And then A1, which is a service area that's pretty much the biggest service area on the south side, which is South La Homa and Brave Fogel, all that area there. All that area has been substantially complete. So one-year warranties have already initiated in those areas, but everything over here on the, on the north, uh, east of Minnesota, the warranties have not started. So. Milo, so let's say within that one year, we go back and we do find deficiencies. Are we going to contact the surety or are we going to contact the, the, the contractor, contract. the regional contractor? The surety? So within the one year? Yes. Within the one year, uh, it, it would probably be the surety. Okay. I think that Have would be more back? of a question for, for Jeff, but yeah, I think yeah. I think the, the, the contract that we would be closing would be with the surety, not with the contractor. Okay, so let's just not forget about it and kind of do walkthroughs on those areas that have been completed. Yes. To uh, find out yeah. if we have any deficiencies. Yes, it's kind of similar, similar that what we did with when we closed out the LNG portion, 
we set a calendar to right before the one-year warranty was going to expire. We did we did a walkthrough in those areas, which is when we found some uh, a lot of the settlements in the pavement. They took care of those. Yeah, because so. after that rain we had two weeks ago, I got a bunch of calls and pictures of sinkholes and yards, and it was horrible, man. Yes. So we can go yeah. out there and start like now, not yeah. wait till a no. year. Okay. Yeah, no, and, and anything inside the yards, that was the yard line contractor. Yeah. And then so last week we received a lot of customer service. Uh, emails from here from the district and and that's what they that's what they worked on the most last week okay thank you thank, thank you, you. Yes. <clears throat> okay. item number 18 executive session as provided by texas open meetings act texas government code sections 551.071-551.091 the board of directors may convene and close the executive session to deliberate discuss or consult regarding the matters listed below and on proper motion and approval, any of the items set forth above. Item A, Texas Water Development Board, Palmview Sanitary, Sewer Improvement Projects, Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code 551.071, consultation with attorney. Item B, Performance Services, Inc., Litigation, Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code Section 551.071, consultation with attorney. And item C, Jimmy Klausner and Sons, Liquidated Damages for Palmview Wastewater Collection, System Phase 1, Lift Stations A2, F, G, and G7, Project 3, Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code, Section 551071, consultation with attorney. I need a motion at 646 to go into executive session. I'll make a motion to go into executive session. Second. I have a motion by Diaz and I have a second by Loya. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. <clears throat> 